would ask you to turn to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to uh, try to exalt the Lord in this this morning. I got such a blessing out of studying this and uh, the things that the Bible says concerning the words that John wrote here. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's 1 John instead of John. 1 John 3. <coughs> Page uh, chapter 3, book 1 John. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, and for, and for we shall be as He is. Every man that hath this hope in Him purify himself, even as He is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that He was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in Him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen Him, neither knows Him. So that's the reading of our uh, message this morning, our lesson this morning. And we uh, was looking at this, and there are so many things in here that that uh, that John writes here, but. Uh, notice here as he, he says, first of all, to get your attention, behold. Amen. And that is speaking out and saying, hey, this is good stuff. And of course, I'm not saying if there's any bad stuff in the Bible, but this is something, he, when he uses this behold, uh, he would say that there is something extra special here that you need to understand. And uh, I have went over it and went over it and I... I, I, I I got a blessing out of it, and I hope I can uh, give you a blessing by what I say and what I read. But he said, "Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us." Now we we wonder what is he saying about manner? What kind of manner? What uh, he's saying? What manner? And this manner is a way in which anything is done or happens, or a way of acting. And the, and the writer here, John, says, "Behold, what." Uh, manner or what way of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Uh, and, and it's the manner of love the Father has bestowed He's saying to us this morning, hey, uh, when He said, Behold, He wants us to understand what great love the Father has for us. Amen. And so many times, so many times, we don't realize that. We don't pay attention to it. Uh, we fail to uh, give God the glory for the things that is going on in our life. And listen, if we don't have nothing that we think is good going on in our life, give Him glory because we can give Him glory. Amen. Because listen, uh, everybody can't give Him glory. They might say praise the Lord. But listen, that's not, the, if it's not coming from the heart and truth, it's not anything that uh, pleases Him. So we see here that uh, uh, and first of all, in this love, we uh, we know uh, that in John three sixteen, and we we know it by heart, but we sometimes we rattle it off, and we don't understand what we're saying, or we don't uh, pay any attention to what we're saying. But but God, but, uh, but but in this, God gave His Son. Amen. Now it's very it's very important this morning that that we understand that that he did give his son and he had no reason he had no he had no pressure whatsoever but he he wanted to do it and Amen. he wanted to create a people that he could uh be father to that he in in eternity again would have these the these uh, these people uh that would live with him and that would worship Him and would praise Him. And so this, He gave His only begotten Son. And there's no, there's not, in, in, in the Scriptures, I can't find anything any greater in this love than what He did for Amen. us in this. And I know He loved us and He loved us 
and it's full of of, uh, of scriptures in here where that it says that, that Jesus loved us and God loved us. But listen, He gave everything that He had in the way of uh, 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 that He loved because He loved His Son. And He gave that Son. And He set an example that we should give our love to Him. So He says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Now this is one of the rewards this morning for that love that God gave us that we could be called or we should be called the Son of God. Now, think about this this morning, uh, you know, and, and how that we love uh, the Lord. But when we go out and people say, well, when you go to church, are you a Christian? Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. But do you ever think about saying, yeah, but listen, I can be called the Son of God. Because, listen, I am I am a son of God because notice what it says here just a little bit. And I'm not talking about taking the place of Jesus because He was the only begotten Son. But there are many sons out here. But He says here, uh, and notice in, in, in verse 2, Be, now, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. So Amen. we are the sons of God. Right. We are as close to kin as a person can be to God, or in, 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 the, in the physical state, or in the fleshly state of, of closeness, we are His sons, and we can say to the world, I am the Son of God, in that I am His Son that He chose before the world began. He chose me Amen. before, and, and listen, that's something that I ought to be able to shout and I ought to just continually tell everybody. He chose me. Amen. And, and you know, I was thinking about this and, and, and I know we have every time we think about it. What did I do? Why did I deserve it? I didn't. Right. I didn't I didn't deserve it, but he chose me. And I love him for it and I thank him for it. And I want to praise his holy name and exalt his name and tell others about the goodness of God because He chose me Amen. and He made it possible that I would not have to uh, be anywhere that I didn't want to be after this body, I, I leave this body, but I can be with Him and, and we're going to see something here in a, in a minute that, that He goes on to say, but here He says, Beloved, in verse 2 again, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. So, we're going to be something greater uh, than the Son of God, in, in, in that, uh, uh, there, because, uh, uh, you know, when, when Paul was caught up to the third heaven in uh, 2 Corinthians earth, he, he said he seen things and heard things that he couldn't utter, that he right. couldn't repeat. And listen, I'm sure, I'm sure that he even then saw some of the things that John's writing about because I'm sure that he has told John all of these things and John got, a, got this message from God that we're going to be something else. We're going to be, and he says, he answers the question and it does not yet appear what we shall be. You but bet. notice, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Now we're going to be like Him, and so we're going to be we're going to be greater than uh, than and than what we are now. And we're going to have a glorified body, and we're going to have a and we've already got a sinless soul. So we're going to we're going to be like He is, and we right. can. We can communicate with Jesus. We can communicate with others in the Spirit. We can love one another in a greater way. Uh, there's so many things, but I want, if I can find it right quick, I like, I would like to turn over to the Book of Isaiah in and, and, and 56, I believe it is. I read a little something over there about uh, about this. Isaiah 50, I believe it's 56, five. Yeah, in, in, in verse, uh, in chapter 56 of the book of Isaiah, in verse th uh, 3, we'll, we'll, we'll include this to show you what he's talking about. 
Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuch that keeps my Sabbath and chooses the things that please me and takes hold of my covenant, even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Amen. So we're going, we, we think when we are, we're, we're saying, well, I'm the son of God. Uh, and that I've, I've been chosen as the son of God. But listen, there's things going to be greater than that. We'll have a greater witness than that. And we, we ought to... Uh, we ought to tell people this because uh, you know so many people don't understand that, and the, and the thing of it is, the people that are that are are watching this, that are not in the in the building or, or later on will be watching it. Listen, they need to understand these things that that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary, Amen. and died for us that we might be saved, that we might have this blessedness here that, that uh, John is talking about. And so he says here uh, again, uh, notice in the latter part of, of verse 2, what we shall be, but we know not, not, not knowing that when He shall appear, and He's talking about when Jesus Christ comes back and says, come up hither. Now listen, here is another blessing that Jesus and God honors us with openly. There's no shyness about it, like sometimes we shy around the point and say, uh, you know, and, and afraid to say, well, I'm, I'm a Christian or I'm a son of God or I, I, I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. But here he says here, we shall be like Him. Uh, and, and notice here that He tells us about uh, 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 we know that when, let me let me regroup when he shall appear we shall be like him and and this being like him is is a far greater thing than we can understand because uh, the 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 goodness of that thing is that we'll be perfect amen. We'll not have to worry about this old flesh sinning. We'll not have to worry about aches and pains anymore because listen, all of these things will be passed away. Amen. And all things will be new according to God's Word. So he says uh, here in, in this that in, uh, uh, I want to read you something if you will. Bear with me just a minute. In Romans 8. I want to read just a little bit. And, uh, maybe this will just get it across the better. It'll tell you better than I can tell you. Romans 8.18 All right, here we go. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Now, when we uh, when we hear Jesus saying, "Come up hither," and He is exposing He is exposing us to the world. He's saying, "This is my children. These are the ones." And now listen, there's going to be people living around here when this thing happens, and He's not going to be shy about calling us His children. And Amen. so here. Uh, the, the Paul is writing to the church of Rome and he says, I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature which waiteth for the manifestation of the Son of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath sub subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. So what he is saying here is we're going to be delivered from this sort of ungodly flesh. We're going Amen. to 
Uh, and, and, and we as God's people don't need to be ashamed of anything that we stand for. If we stand for it, we need to we need to shout it. And listen, these people that you see out here every day running up and down the road flagging and and, and carrying things in their in their in their hands and banners and signs and things like that. Listen, they're not ashamed. And so why in this world should we be ashamed right. to submit uh, or to confess our our uh, our belief to the Lord uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ? We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. And, and listen, we're we're not honoring the Father like we should. <coughs> so again, in verse in verse three, notice here again. And every man that hath this hope in him purify himself even as he is pure. So he's not making himself pure, but he continually purifies himself. He continually witnesses, being a witness for the Lord. He, he, he gives honor and glory to the Lord, and he is purifying himself greater and greater and, and, and being drawn closer to the Lord through this. So he says, he, and every man that hath this hope in him purify himself even as he is pure. In Romans, again, I will, uh, if I can get back over there in just a minute, Romans 5, we'll read you just one of the scripture. Romans 5 and verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So this, this morning, should encourage each one of us when, when the, the bad times come, when the temptations come, when uh, the time of comes that you, uh, well, I don't know if we're saying anything to them about it or not. You know, we need to we need to understand our condition because he says here, therefore being justified by faith, we're justified by faith. Amen. And then and then and then, and then in verse uh, uh, three, look, look, notice and not only so, but we glorify in tribulations also. This is some of the things that we dread. We uh, try to shun, and sometimes this keeps us a little bit on the shy side about uh, upholding uh, what the Lord has done for us. No, but notice he says here in verse 3, knowing that tribulations work of patience. And so when we have these tribulations, and uh, we still uh, continue to serve the Lord and stand for the Lord, notice what he says, knowing that tribulations work of patience. And patience, experience, and experience hope. Amen. Now here's that hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And so we have this blessed assurance. We have this hope within us. It's not a, as, as some people uh, uh, uses this hope so salvation. It's not that kind of hope. There's no doubt in this hope here. It's a blessed hope. It's a hope that we have uh, obtained through the Lord Jesus Christ and through patience and through tribulations. And we have this hope. And so here, again, in verse 3 of our lessons, and every man that hath this hope in him purify himself even as he is pure. So uh, when the tribulations come and when the uh, times of testing comes, listen, try to take it with patience because patience, patience, it says over here, work of experiences and experiences hope. And this blessed hope that he's talking about is that assurance just like that you know when you um, uh, walk, walk across the, the Dover Bridge that it's going to hold you up. You should be that secure in your hope Amen. towards Jesus Christ. Now, he says here uh, in verse uh, 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And so uh, uh, we, we know that it's just the breaking of the law. Uh, our, our, 
our sins are things that, that are not pleasing to God. And so he's, he's just saying here that we, we need to try to control these things. But notice here in verse 5, and you know that He was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. And so if you have that hope, and Jesus Christ is manifested, and we can, mani we can help manifest Him and have that blessed hope, then listen, that keeps our sins uh, away from us. That keeps us from having that, that desire to sin. And because, listen, the flesh does have the desire to sin. Right. So here, here, and, and, and notice here uh, in verse uh, 5, uh, and, and you know that he was manifested by the red. Verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Amen. Now, you've heard people say, well, I haven't sinned in 20 years. Well, they're misled. They're misled. Here, he's not talking about what sins. The thing that he's talking about did sin once and inherited it, but it's taken away. That's, that sin has been atoned for. And so that that he atoned for, the spirit, the soul, does not sin. Amen. And, 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 and I think John speaks of that also. But here, these people, these people that say, well, I hadn't sinned in 20 years, are talking about their flesh. Because, listen, I haven't sinned, I can say this and say it truthfully, I haven't sinned since I was saved. Because I'm talking about the soul, the spirit. It's, 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 it's born of God. It don't Amen. sin. It don't commit sin. But I can't say that I had sin since I come to church, because I pro I have. In some way or another, I have. I have done something, thought something, or I had a, had an experience in, in this old flesh that is sinful and it, right. it's, it's rotten. It's rotten to the core, and that's what it, that's what it feasts upon is sin. But again, we'll we'll. When he says, come up hither, and we drop all of this, this old flesh and all of this and that, and come out of that grave, listen, then we're going to be pure because we're going to be, Amen. We're going to be connected with the, the, the Spirit that has already went to be with Jesus. And now our glorified body is going to come out of that grave and unite with that Spirit. And we're going to be then for that we can say, I have a sin. I haven't sinned uh, in a thousand years from then. You can say, I haven't sinned. Right. Because you're going to have a glorified body and a glorified spirit and you're perfect as, as God is perfect and there's no sin in you because, listen, He says, Whosoever abideth in Him sinneth not and whosoever sinneth hath not seen Him neither knows Him. Little children, it says here, Let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Right. Now, again, the, that that commits sin, the being of the devil, is the flesh. It's not, I mean, of course, a, uh, a, an unsaved soul is of the devil. Right. And so. That's the ones that commit sin, but not your saved soul does not commit sin. Now, he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Amen. Now we can you can you can you can take this to the bank, you can you can believe this, you can and you can if you're if you're saved and listen and trust in God, you can believe this that your soul does not sin once you've been saved. Amen. It's perfect and if you die with this old sinful body, it's gonna this old sinful body is gonna be full of sin and probably uh, in dying, you'll lay there and, 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 and do something that you shouldn't say, something that you should say, and it'd be a, a sin or uh, something. But listen, this soul does not sin. And so that's what God's Word says. It ain't what I say, but it's what God's Word says. Now, in this, 
in this that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. In this, in verse 10, the children of God are manifested in the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now, he notice here, he says, in this the children of, of God are manifested. They're, they're, they're manifested. And also, it says, and the children of the devil. They're manifested in their works too. They're, they're, they're shown. Amen. And the children of God are manifested and they're shown by their, by their works and, and by their, their character and all this. So uh, that's what he's talking about here. For this is the message, in verse 11, for this is the message that ye had heard from the beginning that we should love one another. So this is some of the other things that we're uh, wanting to study on this morning. Uh, in verse, uh, in verse uh, uh, 8, He that committed sins of the devil, for the devil's... No, I'm wrong. I mean, yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Let me get back to my lesson. Please, I'll be, I'll be through just in a minute. I'll be through just in a minute here, too. I'm going to lost my place. In verse, uh, uh, in verse uh, 12, I'll get on with this. Not as Cain, who was of the, uh, the wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Amen. Marvel not, my brother, if the world hate you, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And so the writer here, as we started off, he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had. And we need to remember all these things that we've read about loving the brother, uh, about uh, uh, the, the many things that we've discussed here this morning. And and, and and realize that we are the sons of God. Amen. We are. And we can be called away. Uh, and that's what God's word says. And so if I if I call if I tell if I tell someone, hey, uh, Brother Larry preaching down, you know he's a son of God. Uh, I mean I mean they, they probably be running in the trees and everything else. But <laughs> listen, I can say that and be truthful according to God's word. Right. And so we thank you this morning for listening to us and pray for us that we might uh, continue to try to study and seek out the leadership of the Lord. Thank you all so much.